Hello, good evening people and uh, here we are, a special tribute to Seb, Danke Seb, thank you, uh, we love you. Uh, sadly, this is going to be Seb's last race, 299 starts in F1. Uh, sadly, he couldn't get it to that magical 300 because of, well, he missed the race or two because of COVID, but anyway, uh, here we are in the Aston Martin, equal performance of course, and here for a setup. Uh, to show you how you can set up your car in a race for Abu Dhabi. Okay, most of the time you're probably going to be racing at night, so you won't really have to worry too much about tire temperatures. Although, you know, that can be an issue around here if you slide your car too much in the third sector. Uh, even in the first sector, it's uh, quite high speed there. So, despite the nature of the track where there's a lot of long straights, uh, you know a track is just a track uh, long straights what comes before that slow corners so you're gonna need some good amount of grip uh, downforce as well to make sure that you, in the long race distance your lower down and your higher downforce ish setup uh, will help to preserve your tires which will help you to gain some time in the corners uh, on the straights you know your time is pretty much going to be the same if you get a good exit then you can defend if you get a bad exit Forget about defending, forget about even attacking. It's almost impossible sometimes, especially if someone has DRS on you. Okay, battery is so and so. It's sometimes it's difficult to save uh, depending on the setup. Again, uh, we are going somewhat lower downforce compared to the world record setup. And uh, let me just show you what kind of a abomination the world record setup is. Uh, it's not really something I enjoy driving while uh, trying to make this setup. And uh, here you can have a look. The world record set up just a few days ago now uh, it's not a bad setup i'll say as a baseline it's a very good setup to use but it's very very oversteering a lot of rotation in the car you know, i wouldn't say it's oversteering but you know it has a lot of rotation that you need to be very precise with your inputs all right your brakes acceleration and also your turning 26 20 uh, pretty nice 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 amount of wings in a in a long race this will be very very useful because um, you know once your tire is starting to go off it's the arrow that's going to keep your car on track all right uh, transmission 60 on throttle pretty good i tried 55 but uh, because uh, there's a lot of slower exits here uh, such as the exit before the the first drs zone right and then also the chicane after the first drs zone which leads to the second drs zone uh, it's crucial traction zone around there and running 60 overall seems to be pretty fine it does not unsettle the car in any way 55 was a bit unsettling uh, 50 off throttle already allows the rear of the car to turn around in corners quite nimble and uh, helps you to get the car stopped as well in braking zones so if you go any higher maybe it will be useful in uh, sector 3 uh, you know the left right the sweeping corners where you might have to lift off a little or you're going half throttle and if you like the car is just a little unstable uh, as your race goes on you can try 51 in your setup of course uh, off throttle can only be adjusted before you go into a race session so during qualifying and before the race in between there you can change it suspension geometry again no questions about this we're going to skip right right left left all the way all the tracks any conditions use this suspension yeah uh, <laughs> i've no idea what what is this meant to achieve whoever made this uh, world record setup was whichever esports driver came up with this or you know uh, surely some uh, mad lad out there who did that uh, three front suspension understandably you want to keep it soft because there's a lot of bumps here that uh, that can unsettle the car there's also a lot of curbs you have to take so keeping the front suspension soft really helps with that rear suspension the only reason why i think uh, they've raised it is because maybe the rear is rear of the car was bottoming out somewhere or you know just to get a bit more turn in on the start into a corner or something probably that's the reason it's been done anti-roll bound 2 is pretty soft again so in the mid corner you can really turn the car and uh no understeer basically uh rear anti-roll bar you can see is at five uh, what this allows you is uh, you know the rear of the car moves around even more it generates a lot more rotation as you go higher so this is pretty good for a high speed section like maybe the end of uh the two back straights uh, which leads to this entire sector tree which is twisty it's pretty good there but everywhere else in the slow corners this is a nightmare to uh, nightmare to handle turn one is quite a 90 degree left hander fast left hand as well it's pretty difficult to manage four four on the right height 
just nice actually even in my setup i'm using four four you can try five rear right height to make sure the car doesn't bottom out on the rear uh, i found that it doesn't really affect your straight line speed in any any form of favor uh, so you can run five on the rear on the front keep it at four i think that gives you good amount of uh, front end grip to get the car turned in into the corners here it's pretty important if you miss the turn in you're going to be losing a lot of time on the exit uh, you're just going to understeer into the walls 150 brakes again this is pretty much like suspension geometry you don't touch this keep it as it is 51 might be useful if you notice your red tires are wearing out a lot in the race uh, or maybe in qualifying into the heavy braking zones you can always try 51 if you want to run a very aggressive uh, setup uh, 51 will help you to not uh, you know have oversteer on the rear Okay, tight pressures again in the time trial it's nonsense like this you can run minimum front maximum rear that's for time trial for a race always start with minimum on the front that gives you good amount of grip on the front on the rears i like to run on only two or three clicks depending on uh, the practice runs that i do uh, most of the time i end up doing three clicks on the rear so that is just to give the rears a bit of stability when you go higher on the tire pressures it becomes more stable and responsive in high speed so this is good for high speed this is good for slow speed especially you know maybe there's not really too many slow speed corners around here anymore uh, unlike last year's layout uh, you know last game's layout uh, which had a lot of uh, twisty bits in sector 3 but that's that for the world record setup now let's have a look at what i created uh, for myself for a race conditions uh, straight away you can see i'm running slightly lower downforce not too much just one click low on the front arrow uh, that's because uh, setup the world record setup has a lot of rotation in it it's very pointy it, the rear moves around a lot uh, the front is a bit sharp into entries but uh, mid corner i just can't handle it so i just reduce the front arrow and it seems to be okay on entry it's not like you know feeling like the car just wants to snap on entry and then in the exit I've uh, done some adjustments uh, to the suspension setup so that uh, you know the car feels as I want it. Transmission again 60, 50, 60 on the on throttle, 50 off throttle just fine. I would try maybe 51 and see in a race condition, maybe between qualifying runs, three runs, right? So I'll just uh, alternate between 51 and 50 and see which is the better one to use. Uh, obviously, 50 is going to be better theoretically to give you more turn in. But if you're getting too much turning into some corners, especially in the third sector, you might want to raise it to 51. Suspension geometry, again, same thing, no question. Suspension, this is where, you know, I've made the changes compared to that world record setup. Now, I've got rid of the, the rear anti-roll bar and a rear suspension kept it at 1, so that the grip that I get out of the rear tires is quite consistent and smooth. Uh, it doesn't... Uh, want to kick out the rear especially when i enter into a corner and try to put the power down so one one on the rears just nice on the front is always where you can play around uh to get the car to feel exactly how you want all right arrow is going to give you majority of your time majority of lap time suspension is going to help you make the car feel the way you want it uh, to help you extract that extra time all right it's not necessarily going to make the car faster or anything but of course uh, there are some catches to it if you go too stiff on the you know front suspension and anti roll bar it's going to make your car understeery and uh, even if you raise the arrow or reduce the rear arrow you're not really going to gain lap time out of it so make sure your arrow is you know set first and then you can come and tweak the suspension three on the front suspension i've kept it the same it was just nice i tried two the car was a little wiggly waggly in corner entry four was a bit understeery so i just kept it at three uh, should be fine in the race condition also front anti roll bar from two i raised it to four why because it was moving a lot in the middle of a corner like let's say turn one i turn the car into the corner and then when i start to open up the steering and put down some power the you know the car, front of the car was sliding a lot uh, that happens because when your front anti roll bar is soft it allows the car to have more grip and when there's too much grip on the front, not enough grip on the rear, you get oversteer. So how do you solve it? Uh, it's either you add some rear wing to give the rear a bit more grip, or you take away grip from the front by increasing the front ARB. 
So 4-1, just nice as well. And throughout the middle sector, well, middle sector is just two straights. Uh, throughout the last sector, that's a lot of uh, medium speed corners. This felt really nice. The card did not want to kill me on, on power or on, on entry as well. Okay. Right height, I kept it at 4 on the front again, it's pretty nice. I tried 5, it was a bit unnecessary because there's a lot of high speed corners you have to take, especially the banking after the second DRS straight. Uh, if you have too much right height, it's going to generate a lot of understeer there. Uh, if you have too low, it's going to make the car too pointy and uh, your car is going to spin out uh, while you take the corner. So 4 is just nice. Rear as well, 4 is just good. I tried 5, it's also nice, but uh, I didn't like it. Uh, uh, you can try it as well uh, if you feel like on uh, the exit of the hairpins both hairpins uh, no the hairpin before the first DRS straight and on the exit of the chicane before the second straight these are two important traction zones on the straight if you feel like your car is just on power is just like sliding the rear is just over steering everywhere you can try to raise the rear right height that will make your car a bit more compliant under acceleration in those parts and yeah, you can keep it at five. I don't recommend going on six unless you want to run like a crazy, uh, crazy low, lower front wing arrow and then you want to run some rake on the car to make sure the rear rotates. You can experiment with that, but again, aerodynamics is going to make sure your car is, you know, quite consistent throughout the lap. Four, four, keep it the same. Brakes, always the same. No changes to this. And tire pressures, I've gone minimum on the front. It definitely helps with the front grip. Uh, I've gone two clicks on the rear just to make sure the rear is not too slippery, too slidey on high speed corners. Now, uh, what's the catch here? Uh, when you run lower tire pressures like this, which pretty much is the meta you have to run in the game, you are generating more tire wear. Uh, to reduce tire wear, you have two options. One, three options really. Uh, the two, are setup related one is driving related so either you increase your the amount of downforce you run so you get less tire wear or you increase the tire pressure so that you get less tire wear or you drive smoother either one you know so the third thing it's up to you the first two things you have to make sure you get it right in the setup uh, to complement your driving so you can't really run too much high pressures here because one thing it's a hot hot circuit uh, although it might be these conditions uh, in a real race a, you're not be gonna be getting too much benefit out of super hot tires if they exceed 99 100 degrees you will start to lose grip exceed 104 105 degrees you're gonna have understeer on the front or oversteer on the rear or both so yeah keep it low and uh, adjust as you go make sure you do some trial runs on heavy fuel to see if the tire pressures are okay ideally on hard tires when you're on full fuel load you want to make sure the tire temperature is around 93 to 95 and naturally if you start on the mediums with heavy fuel you're going to be fine as well if you go to your second stint on mediums with lighter fuel and the same tire pressures at the start like this you're going to have just about the same temperatures For qualifying you can keep it the same because it's just one lap make sure you start your lap on about 84 85 degrees of uh, tire temperature uh, by the time you reach the end of sector one the tires are going to be fully warmed up You'll have enough grip for sector two and three so yeah that's it for the setup uh, race start i will always recommend trying one click high on the front wing because on heavy fuel uh, and harder tires it is generally less grippy on the front to generate more grip just increase the front wing you'll be fine uh, transmission again you can swap between 51 or 50 on the rears on the off throttle uh, on throttle keep it at 60 you'll be fine uh, throughout the race maybe you can try to go up to 65 or 70 if you feel like you know, uh, you're starting to slide when you accelerate out of corners. Try 55 first. If it gets worse, then just go back to 65. Uh, that's one way always you can make sure your car feels just nice in the race. Everything else as it is. If you have understeer on entry, reduce the front suspension. Oversteer on entry, increase the front suspension. If you have mid corner, if the car is turning in too much when you hit the apex or when you hit a curb or something, if it's turning too much, increase the front ARB. If it's not turning enough, you have to reduce the ARP. Right height, keep it the same. Uh, not really a, a, a thing to worry about here, especially uh, the curbs. Although they are high, 4.4 four is just nice on it. Brakes, keep it the same. Tire pressures, experiment with it. Or you can just run minimum tire pressures all the way at the expense of some extra tire wear. So there you go. Abu Dhabi is done. And uh, well, we're going to miss up.
that's that's for sure but uh let's have a good finale and then after the race is done after the finale is over you'll be getting a lot of uh you know five or six videos i think i've split it up to show you how to set up each screen in your setup screen all right so aerodynamics one video blah 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 everything is there uh comprehensive guide you might say to how how to set up your car yeah that's gonna be it take care everyone stay safe bye bye